In this video, we're gonna go over how you get consistent characters using a new GPT from the ChatGPT store. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Ben Silverman, and my main goal is to try and help make AI and emerging technologies more accessible and uh, understandable for creatives and creative people in order to help give them superpowers to do what they really love doing the most. Now, let's jump right in. This is going to be a quick one, but I'm really excited about it and being able to give this to you because uh, I'm trying to sift through all of these GPTs and it is taking some time, but when you find a good one, you wanna share it. So first off, I'm gonna hop into the GPT store and right here, this is the main GPT section on ChatGPT, and there you just hit Explore GPTs like we did yesterday. Once you're in the store, you're gonna click right here at the top where you want to search public GPTs, and you're going to type character. And then the first thing that pops up being used 5,000 plus times is consistent character GPT. I'm gonna click on that and it's just going to take you right to it. Consistent Character GPT, your creative partner in consistent character design. And here, all it says is click here to start creating a character. One second, here we go. Uh, it walks you right through it. Great, let's start creating your character designs. First, should the character be male or female? I'm gonna have him be male. The name I am going to call him Max. I have a prompt already written here, so I'm gonna just take that prompt and then add it right here. And what I am going to say, I want him to be early 20s, American, rustic brown hair, preppy. He wears a pair of pressed blue jeans, a button down plaid shirt tucked in with a black simple belt. He has thin black rimmed glasses and his hair is a bit rustled. He is likable and sweet. Now it's asking me what style or theme would you like for the image? You can choose from photography, Pixar animation, 2D. Okay, I'm just going to say Pixar animation style. What should I vary in each image? For example, expression, act, uh, action, etc. I'm going to vary the expression that he has and uh, his action that he's doing. Okay, so the first picture I'm going to have him uh, excited. All right, let's see what it does. Boom, he's excited. <laughs> All right, the next one, I'm gonna have him deep in thought working. All right, that's not too bad. I'm gonna have him uh, on a jog. Not too bad. The shirt's a little bit different. The jeans and the belt are about the same. His hair is pretty similar. He's parting in a different direction. Let's see what this next one does. Getting ready to throw a party. No idea. Let's see. I think they're pretty good here. What I'm gonna do is I am going to download these and use this for a next step. I'm gonna bring it into Canva in a second just to show you a better use case for this as well besides just animation. So there's a couple ways you could do this. So uh, that looks like a guy who could throw a party, who knows? Um, I think it's more about the background. Uh, but so now next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these over into Canva you could do a number of things with them. So the first thing, I'm just gonna go back into my uh, thumbnails that I've created. So I'm gonna clear out this one and I am going to bring in my pictures. And if you have not used Canva yet, then I think you are going to be in for a treat. So here I am, I'm gonna bring in those pictures right here. And um, now, so the cool thing about Canva is once you bring your photos in, you can go up to edit photo, and then I could literally just remove the backgrounds. And now I could use these as my thumbnail images, right? So that quick, if you don't know Photoshop and you don't have to go through all of the different pieces that you need to know layers and whatnot, all you have to do is go into Canva and literally hit remove background. That is literally all I just did and it does it completely for you. See, now if I want, I can send that layer, send it to back, 
Now I've got all my little characters. So the GPT store, if I wanted to do something like that, and I have my, here, I might do this, something like this, make him a little bit bigger, running in on the side. This guy, he's holding onto something, so I'll just have him hold onto this on the side, make him maybe right there, um, bring this guy, maybe I'm gonna make it look like he's a little bit further in the back, maybe behind him. Bam, now I have my little guy. That's great. So all I did was hit remove background and now I could use this for any type of thumbnail that I wanna make. Now, if you wanna get even crazier, I am going to go into Pika. Now Pika is an animation tool and it takes photos that you've made with say Mid Journey or just any photos and it literally will give you animation uh, that quickly. So I'm just going to see what this does if I bring in this and I'm not even going to give it a prompt. I actually find that most times when I don't give it a prompt, it actually gives me better animations. When I tell it to, uh, when I tell it to do specific things, I think it over exaggerates the things that I, I've been telling it to do. So um, that's that's kind of what I mean. But look, because look, for instance, here's an old project that I was working on, right? In this old one that I just did, I said I want her to blink and her hair's her hair to move in the breeze. And then I did it the exact same picture again, and I did not give it any prompt, and it, it was so much more subtle. It was so much more subtle. And that's what I love even more. And like this one. I didn't give a prompt, it just made her hair just move ever so slightly. And this, her dress just moved ever so slightly. It's pretty cool. Now I'm just excited to see what it does with, with my little Pixar man. Uh, uh, as I showed you in a previous video, uh, you can make him talk by going to a program called DID and, and basically just putting in a script and recording a script and then he can talk. Uh, I haven't actually done this. I'm doing this live for the first time to see if it's something that would actually work. But uh, I'm just trying to give you more use cases for, okay, I've generated consistent characters. Great. Now, what can I use them for? Yes, you could use them for a profile picture, but let's see. This one, that's kind of cool. So he moves his eyebrows and he moves his mouth a little bit. And again, that's I'm just, I'm just this is all this is all testing and there's so many different ways. Right now you're starting to see people use motion control and I could take this motion control, maybe turn him into literally a 3D mesh and then use motion control to control some sort of animation. Go into DID, make him talk. There are so many different ways you can do things. Still super early stages, but you get the idea. It's super exciting and I just wanted to get this to you right away.